Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am your host, Vortex, from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is we try to create weekly videos teaching people how to produce music. Our goal here is to get as many people producing music as possible, and the easiest, most accessible way to start making music is on your iOS device. So if you do want to help us out on our mission, make sure to smash those likes, subscribe, and share out the show. Now in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to take a pretty standard 8-bar loop and turn it into a full song, because it really is an all too common scenario where a producer can just create a ton of musical ideas all day long and create fantastically sounding 8 bar loops but never actually finish the whole song. Now as it turns out, sequencing is usually the bottleneck when it comes to producers struggling to turn their musical ideas and concepts into fully fleshed out songs. We've actually just recently uploaded a video on this channel teaching you all about song arrangement and proper song structure. But this video is going to be just a little bit different in that we're still going to be covering all those standard song structure concepts, but this time with a bit more hands-on approach. We'll be giving you some practical real-world tips that you can use, such as different types of transitions, using automation, when to take in and out instruments, and a whole lot more. And hey guys, don't forget about our recently launched Discord chat where we can continue the conversation long after the live premieres and live streams have ended. To join in the chat, all you have to do is click on the join Discord link in the description below. And finally, just a reminder that the recent Cubasis 3 giveaway has ended and those five winners have been drawn. We have contacted all the winners via email, so if you didn't get contacted, then you didn't win. But don't worry because if you didn't win, we're going to be having a bunch more giveaways and contests in the the future. And we'll also just throw in a one minute clip of a screen recording of me actually clicking the draw winners button using the gleam.io software. Just so you guys can see how we did it to keep everything transparent and on the up and up. And so with that intro aside, let's get right into showing you guys how to sequence your loops into fully fleshed out songs. Hello and welcome everybody, we are wishing you the happiest of the happiest from Mobile Music Pro to wherever you are in the world. Now we did want to offer our usual disclaimer here in that we don't want you to get too discouraged if the song that we're working with today isn't in the genre that you produce in. Just like the previous video that we released on this channel called How to Arrange Tracks in Cubasis 3, many if not all the concepts that we'll be talking about in today's video can be applied across a multitude of genres. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and put on the headphones. Now what we have here is a just a basic eight bar loop that we just created earlier today. We can go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so you can see all the tracks. Now the loop itself here really isn't that complicated. In fact, it's mostly just drum tracks here and only a couple of melody tracks. All the drum sounds that you hear are in fact coming from our brand new sample pack, Essentials Pack 1, that we just released on mobilemusicpro.com. But the main melody here is actually coming from a cymatics loop, while the supporting melody tracks here with the Shockwave and Synth Player tracks, as well as the 808 track, was played in after the melody loop was added. So once again, we just have our basic drum tracks here made up of a open hat, a snare, a kick, a clap, some hats, and an 808. So now let's go ahead and hear what this loop sounds like really quick. Alright, pretty cool. Just a pretty basic loop as you can hear. Kind of something out of the 90s R&B genre maybe. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with the loop, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do. So the first thing that we actually are going to do is create some song markers so we can have our structure nice and laid out. Then we'll go ahead and move this loop into that song structure, and at that point we can determine which instruments we need to remove and which instruments we need to add back in. And then finally we'll sort of glue the track all together with a few different transition sounds. So what we'll do now is go ahead and create these markers, and we'll fast forward to when that has been completed. Okay, we have now gone and created our arrangement track created out of MIDI regions. So let's see what that looks like if we zoom in here we can see. 
we have our intro, verse 1, pre-chorus, chorus, one more pre-chorus, verse 2, the final pre-chorus, and then two more choruses and an outro. <laughs> it looks like the outro is spelled wrong, so let me just fix that really quick. I'm definitely going to blame the spell check because it actually was, in fact, spell check's fault on that one, folks. So now let's go ahead and go back here, zoom out, and go back to our 8-bar loop. And now what we're going to do is take our 8-bar loop and go ahead and fit it into this song structure that we've created with our arrangement track. So to do that, what we're going to do is make sure that all of our sounds get placed in the chorus first, because that's where we'll know that we're going to have all of our sounds playing at once. And then from there, we can work backwards and start taking out different sounds. So let's do that now. We'll go ahead and select our entire loop by clicking on select, and then long tapping, and then selecting the entire loop. Now we'll go ahead and copy this, and let's paste this in the chorus. So we select our chorus, and make sure we select the very top track, and then hit paste. And let's just zoom in there to make sure that that's perfectly okay. And nope, that is off a little bit, so let's adjust that real quick. There we go. And now let's go ahead and paste this in the other chorus as well. So we'll select the course, tap the top track again, and hit paste. And let's paste this one more time. Now let's zoom in to make sure we got this correct. And it looks like we're off again, no problem. We can just move this right over. There we go. And let's go ahead and make sure we're correct on the other side as well. And looks good. Now let's go ahead and zoom out. All right, we are zoomed out. And as you can see, we have our choruses ready to go. So the next step would be to put in the verses. Now the verses are pretty much going to be the same as the choruses, except we're going to take out a few of these different sounds here. Because again, the purpose of a chorus is usually to have much more energy than the verse. So now let's go ahead and zoom in and select verse 1. So we'll tap on verse 1, select the top track, and hit paste. Now what we're going to do here is first we're going to take out a few of these melodies, and we're probably going to take out some drums at some point as well. But first, let's remove these melodies. So we'll tap on select, and we'll long tap and select these melodies here and remove them by tapping on erase at the very top. Now let's go ahead and select these one more time so that we can paste these across the other verses as well. And let's go ahead and zoom out here and find the other verse. There it is, verse two. Tap on verse two, tap on that first track again and hit paste. So let's zoom out. And as you can see, it really is starting to come all together here as a full song, but there's still some more work left to do. We have to fill in the pre-courses, the intro, and the outro. Now, for the intro and outro, you generally want to start with just a couple of instruments to both guide the listener into the song and out of the song nice and gentle-like, so that it's very clear to the listener when the song is both starting and ending. So the sound that we are going to start out here with is just going to be the actual melody, and we'll probably go ahead and filter that in as well. And since our intro is only four bars, we're going to go ahead and chop our main melody in half. And since it'll be filtered down, it'll probably be a pretty good introduction, giving the listener a good tease into what the actual melody sounds like. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let's go ahead and select the center of the melody, then tap on the track, and then hit split. We'll tap on the first half of that, and let's move this into our intro. So we'll drag this over to the far left here. Now let's go ahead and replace the melody that we chopped in half. All right, perfect. Now let's zoom back out again and hear what this sounds like with just the melody. Okay, so let's go ahead and filter this in. We're gonna automate a filter automation here. So we'll tap on the track and let's go ahead and go to our insert effects and we will add a filter. Find our filter, tap on that. Let's go ahead and move this all the way to the center here a little bit. And let's hear what this sounds like real quick. Okay, let's start out with that. And to enable our automation, we're gonna go ahead and tap on read and write. Let's go back to the beginning here and let's hit play. Now that has been automated, so we'll go ahead and close that. Let's scroll out here and zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to do here is in order to build up the song, we're going to actually not have the hats play until the second part of the first verse. So let's zoom in and chop those hats in half. And I think we'll also remove the open hats for the verses as well. So let's go ahead and remove that. All right, let's zoom out and let's hear what that sounds like.
right, not bad. We're definitely going to need a transition sound in there really quick. But before we add the transition sounds, let's go ahead and finish our outro. To do that, we're going to go ahead and copy our melody. But instead of a four bar outro, we're actually gonna do an eight bar outro. So let's do that. We'll copy and paste our melody, tap on our outro, and hit paste. Let's go ahead and drag out this outro. There we go. Now let's tap on our loop track and tap on our filter. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and filter this out. So let's hit play. All right, perfect. Now we'll just go ahead and add a quick studio fade out by tapping on the grips on the top right hand corner and dragging that a little bit to the left. We'll drag that to be one bar long. All right, let's hear what this sounds like. All right, perfect. So now we have our intro and our outro ready to go. So let's zoom back out here. And now what we have to do is fill in our pre-choruses. So to do that, what we usually do is continue our melody being played, but don't drop all the drums like we do on the intro and outro. Instead, only drop some of the drums. So let's do that now. So first we'll go ahead and zoom in and copy the four bar version of our melody, which is our melody chopped in half here for the intro. So let's tap on that and copy. And now let's go ahead and paste that in our pre-chorus sections. All right. That should be everything there. Let's zoom out. For our intro, let's just go ahead and zoom in a bit more and add a fade into the beginning of the clip, just like we did for the outro, except for the outro, we did a fade out. So let's do a fade in here. We'll tap on our clip, and this time tap on our top left-hand corner grips and drag that to the right to be one bar long. So let's go ahead and zoom into our pre-course, and for the pre-course, I think we're just going to go ahead and keep our claps. So let's copy that real quick. We're gonna tap on our clap track here and hit paste. Let's do that once more for our other pre-choruses as well. So let's really quick just hear what our pre-chorus sounds like. All right, I think that'll work for now. Now it is time to add in our transition sounds. And those usually come in the form of risers and downlifters. And the places you usually add those are in the intros and pre-choruses. So let's do that now. Let's go ahead and scroll to the left, create ourselves a new audio track. Now, actually, we're going to make this yellow. There we go. Yeah, that works. Now, let's go ahead and scroll to our media. And we have a bunch of cymatics effects in here. So, let's see what we have. All right, let's add that one right now. We're probably also going to need some impact sounds as well, but this will work for now. We are in the intro section, so let's move this right before the verse one. It's not getting precisely on track, so we're going to have to stretch this. So, we'll tap on stretch, and we'll tap on pro. And let's go ahead and move this now. There we go, perfect. Let's tap on stretch once more to apply the effect. And let's tap on this track. Let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. Let's go to the mixer, turn this down a little bit, turn the gain down a little. A little bit more subtle, I think that'll work. So let's close out of this for now and zoom back out. And since this really is only for demonstration purposes, I think we're going to use this across all of our transitions here. So let's copy this and put this in our pre-chorus as well. Now we're also going to need some fills, and a great way to put in a fill is actually to take the last part of your drum track and place that in the beginning of it. So in our case for the intro, we're just gonna go ahead and copy those snares, place that right in the first part of the intro here. All right, let's hear what that sounds like now. We'll turn up these snares just a little bit here. And another thing you can do to build energy is remove the last bar of your drums right before the pre-chorus. And let's hit split and remove that part. And let's remove our kicks there as well and remove that part. Okay, now it's time to add some impacts and some down lifters. These are more of these transitioning effects that takes us from one part of the song to the other. So let's go back to our media bay. All right, let's use that one right there. Let's add a new track first, and let's add our new audio. Let's zoom in here, and there we go. Already aligned to the grid, but it is going to be a little bit too long. So we're going to move this over here right in the pre-chorus, and let's stretch this a bit because it is too long. So we'll go to our pro, and let's go ahead and stretch this down to just four bars. 
All right, all three have been pasted now. Okay, let's go ahead and just remove the original loop here and recap what we have done so far. All right, starting to look like a full song now. So let's go ahead and recap what we've done. The first thing that we did is created our arrangement track so that we could go ahead and divide our song into a proper song structure. And as you can see here, we have the intro, verse one, pre-chorus, chorus, pre-chorus, pre verse two, pre-chorus, the final chorus, which spans 16 bars, so that's two choruses, and then the outro, which is four bars. So once we had our song structure laid out, we then took our loop and copied all of the sounds into our various chorus sections, because we did know for the chorus, we wanted all of our sounds. And then after that, we copied and pasted what we had for the chorus into our first verse, and removed a couple of these different sections. We took out some sounds, such as the open hat, and the hats for the first half of the verse. That was for the drums there, and then we also took out the other remaining melody tracks as well, leaving only the first melody loop right here at the very bottom. Then once we had our verse tracks, we then created our intro and our outro by simply only having our melody track combined with our snare track. After that, we created our pre-choruses, which are pretty much just made up of claps for now, and then after that, we were able to add our effects, and those are what really glues the track together. So we added our risers here at the bottom, and then we added our cymbals after that. And that was pretty much it, folks. We then had ourselves a full song. Now, of course, there's still a ton more little tiny details and things that we would like to add if we were actually producing this song for an album. But for demonstration purposes, I think this really gets to the meat of how you want to turn your 8-bar loop into a full song. And so now, finally, let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like. All right, there you have it, folks. We have turned our eight bar loop into an entirely full song. All right, we hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, really quickly, we did want to just go over those five giveaway winners that we had for our recent Cubasis 3 giveaway. So what we're going to do is play a quick video for you of us actually using the Gleam.io website and software to draw those winners. So here we are on the website, and I'm gonna tap on Draw Winners. And as you can see, five winners can be picked with a potential of 32 users that have entered. So we'll tap on draw. And that'll just take a second here. And once that is ready, you can see we have drawn our five winners. And there we are, Sasha, Marquise, Greg H, Tio, and Greg B. So definitely congratulations to those winners. And if you didn't win, guys, don't worry. We will be having a bunch more giveaways and contests in the future. All right, if you guys are still rocking with us, we can't thank you enough for being here. And we especially can't thank the people enough for watching this video live and helping to grow out our community. 
we really hope that this video did successfully communicate these very, very important song construction concepts. While this video and most of the videos on our channel are right now geared more towards the newcomer crowd and people just starting out with mobile music production, we do definitely have a goal of increasing the difficulty of the videos over time and eventually getting into even more things like music theory, sound design, and more. It's just that we really felt that we had to create this video because time and time again, we've seen even the most experienced producers sometimes not be able to finish songs for whatever reason and end up just creating loops all day. While this can be a great creative outlet and a great way to generate new musical ideas for future songs, eventually guys, we all have to bite the bullet and go ahead and sequence out our loops into full songs. And also guys, don't forget about our live streams that air every single Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it actually airs just about an hour or two or so after our live premieres air on Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget about our recently launched Discord chat where the conversation can continue long after the live premieres and live streams. To join in the fun, all you have to do is click on the Join Discord link in the description below. We've got a bunch of different channels in there like collaborations and creations where you guys can share your stuff in a super friendly, very welcoming, non-judgmental environment. And as always, guys, we have a ton more content coming. So if you do want to keep up with everything that we're doing, make sure to join our free mailing list at mobilemusicpro.com and subscribe to this channel. And so until next time, everybody, keep talking music and we'll see you later. Are we ready? Oh yes, yes, we are ready. As it turns out, sequencing is usually the bottleneck that ends. Uh, as it turns out, sequencing is usually the bottleneck that ends up putting. Uh, now, as it turns out, sequencing is usually the bottleneck that ends up making. Uh,